In this week's Truth to Power, Russian author Ted Santos discusses why he believes love is a horrible indicator to qualify a woman for a relationship. This and other points in a show we aptly entitle The Love Track. Tonight, we'll hope to discover what the author meant by that statement. Additionally, Ted promises to explain to us why it is that he feels men should stop looking for love altogether. Welcome to this week's Truth to Power with guest author Ted Santos. Tonight we want to probe Ted's opinion on why he believes that love is a bad qualifier for a man to join a woman in a relationship. Currently, Ted is a business coach and relationship author who does a show called Straight Talk on his YouTube channel. And if you haven't seen that, I suggest that you get over there and see it. We'll put a link at the bottom of the description. Ted has recently published a relationship book called Here's Why You Can't Find Love. And that one is worth getting also. This title is available on Amazon.com and other book person outlets. We will place a link to this item in the comments section below. So, Ted, men shouldn't be looking for love when it comes to women, you say? No, they shouldn't. And... Um... I, I kind of want to create a bigger picture so people can really understand the gravity of, of this situation. So um, I, where I'd like to start is we have a problem in this country. It's a okay. huge problem. We are not dealing with it as a nation. Uh, we're we're kind of like the guy who drinks every day. He's aware he drinks every day, except he's not going to do anything about it because he's got a handle on it. Right. He's a functional alcoholic, huh? Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, he's he's tipsy at seven in the morning from scotch, right? So so and we, we are kind of tipsy from well, maybe we're intoxicated. Um so most people don't know what's some of the costs that it, it everyone thinks they're innocent. So they're a cost and it's getting everyone. So let's start from here. Uh, corporate America is losing $300 billion every year in workplace performance. And most people don't know why. They think they'll guess internet, Facebook, all, all these things. But it's the reason they're losing that much money is because of divorce and, and bad relationships. So imagine you have a large company, 10,000 employees. At some point, a percentage of your employees are headed for a divorce, another percentage are in the middle of one, and another percentage is just coming out of one. And with that many employees uh, dealing with divorce, and another statistic says workplace performance drops by 50 to 75 percent when a person is dealing with divorce. That's not counting cohabitation, uh, just you know, normal dating relationships. That's a lot of people being distracted and not putting in, not giving 100% of what the company wants from them. So what happens? You've got 10,000 people, 25% of them are giving you 50% or less. You start <laughs> laying people off, right? So people don't see how this affects them. And then you look on the social side, uh, divorce ends up welfare, incarceration, um, crimes. And that's another 30 billion that goes directly to the taxpayer. So we've got a big problem. And most people then say, well, what's the solution? Don't get a divorce. <laughs> <laughs> and and people, people want solutions without really understanding the problem, the source of the problem. Who would you say is the main source? And, and so if we, get, if we start getting down to a problem and why there's so much divorce, why there's so many bad relationships in and relationships are getting worse each decade. Uh, people are having more and more problems coming together in relationships. And uh, you could say we've been hoodwinked and bamboozled. We've been conned. Uh, Hollywood has shown us the way to love. And that's failing. And no so you say, you say like this is what Hollywood is showing like a false love. And a lot of people fall for that. Which leads to the destruction you're talking about in the workplace and in homes, the divorces, the separation. And, and that's, that's not counting the emotional trauma that happens to children when you take a parent out of the home. And, yeah. and now you get decade after decade, decade of divorce. And these children, we're seeing the effect. They can't even get along. They're terrified of getting into a relationship. Wow. 
so people can't get along. Long term, no one's going to have babies and the human race will disappear, right? So that's a long term problem. But So if we look at this, why is it people can't find love? Why is it their marriages and relationships just are not working? And it, we always say it's the other person. We have a long list of why people. But if I, I want to make it simple. Most people have no idea what love is. As you just said, they, they're getting images from Hollywood. So most people believe from Hollywood, love songs, that all you need is love. Love saves the day. Uh, if you have love in your relationship, you love your significant other, everything just magically works out. Well, sorry. Love does not create a great relationship. Love is a byproduct of a great relationship. In other words, if two people know how to create a great relationship, what grows out of that great relationship is this affinity, and then that turns into love. But if you don't know how to create a great relationship, if you're lousy at relationships, infidelity, uh, abusive conversations, no care, you know, show me the money, you know, those kind of things, I'm just here for the sex. You may get these biochemical secretions that feel good, like dopamine and oxytocin and endorphins, but that's not enough to sustain a relationship. And if you get yeah, that, I'm going to touch on that for a minute. I remember you said that uh, before, and that's a great point, uh, that love is not a reason to go into a relationship with a woman alone, <clears throat> because a lot of guys, what they think is love is nothing more than a brain chemical. And like you mentioned, okay. uh, serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin. Those three, along with uh, gonadotropin, which is another one, okay. which gonadotropin gives males more testosterone and gets them aroused. So all those four together, oxytocin, dopamine, gonadotropin, and serotonin work to drive them into love. But the funny thing about it, the amygdala part in the brain, which is like a, a little ball sack <laughs> in the middle of the brain in the bottom, that releases a chemical to the frontal lobe, and that regulates whether you're in love with the person, whether they're your friend, or whether you're your enemy. So when you see somebody, that triggers fight or flight. Mm. And interestingly enough, that same method that triggers fight or flight, when a man sees a woman he likes, it turns off the fight or flight. Now, a woman doesn't have that. But that turns off the fight or flight in his brain. And so now he can be used by her if he even perceives that she loves him. Wow. And those four chemicals you're talking about, those four chemicals send a message to the frontal lobe, turn off all threat. She is not a threat. But mm -hmm. uh, females don't have that. They see all males as a threat into their relationship. Interesting. And so uh, for that reason, um, guys get in trouble because that's why we designed this channel so we can give solutions. Exactly. So if we just if we told them that it was serotonin and dopamine, oxytocin, and uh, good anatropin, uh, those chemicals are still wouldn't help them. But to let them know that when they're in the presence of a female that they see sexually attractive or mildly attractive, that the the uh, amygdala, which signals you know fight or flight, right. will turn off in a male's body, and then you think you're in love, like you say. The girl's not bringing anything to the table. Not, exactly. not nothing at all. Yeah, she's just going to show up. Right. And so, uh, I think we were talking before, because I've been counseling since the late 90s. I retired a while back. Uh, and all the guys came to me. And in each case, no matter whether they were rich, no matter whether they were poor, no matter which race, and I talked to all of them, they always said, like you're talking about, she doesn't wash the dishes. She doesn't Clean the clothes. She doesn't do anything around the house. Now, why are those things important? To put women back in what they were before? No. But to me, like you were saying before, it's always the ultimate test. If you ask the woman, what is she going to do for you? Are you going to cook, clean, and wash dishes for me? That is merely a test because she says, no, I can't do that for you. She's already setting a boundary, leading to what you're talking about in the workplace, the destruction of company policy. Because you set a boundary for you only. That same woman won't clean her house, will go out and work for a hotel, clean 15 rooms a day. The same woman won't cook for you, go to a restaurant, cook 150 meals a day. 
So she set a boundary that her sisters have told her since she was a child that right. you don't owe him anything. Right. Only owes you. So that's why I love your subject when you said that love is not a qualifier to get a relationship with a woman because, like I said, after those four chemicals have turned off the frontal uh, lobe portion of the brain that says this woman is wrong. Now, after she messes up in a relationship, it'll turn on to say this woman is wrong. But that's that's because <laughs> you've learned that. It's like if you grew up with somebody, Ted, and they were your best friends. But when you got older, you, that person was your enemy. They caused you strife. They stole from you. Right, your right. mind has changed. Your mental has changed what it thinks about that person. But go ahead, Ted. You're doing so great. Tell me what you think. Well, no, that's that's. I, I want to comment, but there's one other chemical called vasopressin, and women have very little of it. When vasopressin binds with uh, testosterone, it's like putting nitrous in your car, and it just, it's an explosion. But when it binds with oxytocin, it intensifies that also. So now the man has this oxytocin and vasopressin through his whole body, and he's really feeling this only because she looks good, she speaks in a sexy voice, uh, and he enjoys sex with her. And it's, it's like you're saying, but if he doesn't see that she's not bringing any value to his life, that she's, she's kind of like she's robbing his energy, his time, uh, his money, and he's getting nothing in return except for sex, and he has all these feelings, uh, he's, when he finally figures out that he's getting nothing, or he marries her, gets a divorce, and she takes half, he's devastated. But, you know, that, you're exactly right, because... Actually, women come in a relationship much better than we do. We come in like you're talking about. You know, I liked her ass. I liked her breasts, something like that. They come in like this guy's got to make this much money. He's got to have a exactly. career. He's got to have a house. he got to have a car. And if he asks her, what do you have to have? I just show up. I am the table. So they come in it thinking that way. We don't think right. that way. Now, we're going to lose that stuff out the door towards the end. But they're far ahead of us for thousands of years, even tomorrow. He's got to have this, this, and that. And all she's got to do is come across the street and join you. And destruction. You wonder why. There's not a person in the world that a man would allow his buddy <laughs> to join him with nothing. You don't have that. You have equally talented friends or financially the same level friends. We don't just pick somebody off the street. But when we choose a woman, that's what we do. But go ahead. So what's interesting when you look at society and corporations <clears throat> When you look in a corporation, the people who are the top, the highest uh, level of management, the affluent class, they generally have very low divorce rates. And it's not because of the money. It's because they have a better sense of knowing who's compatible with them. So they're not just choosing, the guy is not just choosing a woman based on tits and ass. He's looking for what value. And, and, and we'll, we can go into it deeper. Well, one of the things you could say in a more fluent the guy is, he's looking for her network. What's the yeah. network of you, you, your mother, and your father? And can you open doors for me that I, I cannot open on my own? If she can do that, then whatever time and money he invests in her, he will get a return. Isn't It's like any businessman, any investor, I'll give you a million dollars in return in five years. I want, you know, two X, three X. I want $3 million back. So that's true. And, and that's men true. are just looking for the nice body. That's the, the return is a good feeling. But the affluent, they're looking for a woman, you know, if she's an attorney, if she's a fine, you know, what are the assets that you bring into my life that will make life better or easier for me? Now, that, that's, that's true because, uh, I was in the military in the 80s, in the 1980s. And um, all of the enlisted soldiers, they all chose low wives. Right. And so their turnover rate in divorce is very high. But right. all the officers, they chose women that would be with them for a lifetime. And they added value, just like you're saying. Exactly. Because they teach those officers that way. She's got to have some kind of value because one day, you may be the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. And you don't want that woman standing beside you on TV if she's just no good. But yeah, all throughout the military was that way. Corporate America is that way, just like you said. Exactly. And even in Congress, where it represents the top 1% of the United States, everybody in Congress is rich. But they all are married. They all go to church every day. They got children and grandchildren. They pass down regulation of things for you to do that they would never do. You know, and it's amazing. 
And another thing I, I meant to point out the other day, we were talking. Somebody asked me, why is it that uh, these modern relationships where a woman's like, I want him to cook for me and clean for me. You know, hey, yeah, on top of everything, on top of all of the stuff that you're bringing home an in income, she wants you to go ahead and perform motherly duties. And I was explaining the reason for that when these guys see that today is because they were born to a single uh, mother culture. Right. And if I have to go writing again, I'm going to write about this, but they're born to a single mother culture. So the single mother was a breadwinner of that family. She was a breadwinner for the last 50 years. And that mother worked all day. She right. came home, she cooked, she cleaned, she uh, attended her child's needs, the daughter. So when the daughter married you as a male, you said you were head of household. So she's seen her mother's first example of head of household with somebody who cooks, cleans, does everything, goes out and works and breaks her back, never complains. So that's why they're doing uh, treating guys this way. He doesn't cook for me and he doesn't do that for me. He doesn't love me while I hate him. But their first example of uh, head of household instead of there being a dad in the past and a mom. Right. Right. Sure. That, that, that for sure that happens. But also, you know, just think about television shows, uh, these uh, romance novels. And, and then you have the women's rights groups who say, well, why should a woman have to do all the cooking and cleaning? Men should have to do that too. Men, and, you know, it's interesting. They've done surveys. And the more housework a man does, does not increase a woman's happiness. In fact, they're less happy now uh, than they were in the 1970s. So it's it's not a solution, and it's it, it's it's draining guys. It's it's really kind of uh, sucking the life out of manhood in a, in our well, yeah yeah. That's because they don't see him as a male when he does that. But when the women came to me, I don't care if they were married two years or thirty years. They would ask me the same question you're talking about, counselor. And with the guy sitting right there, uh, she said, why does he do that and do that? Well, the reason uh, all children, more than adults, are completely sexist, uh, they're, they're sexist. So all children, more than grown men, are sexist. So society shouldn't go around calling them men sexist. Right. All babies expect their mother to feed them. They start with breastfeeding. Right. At a certain time, even if she never learned how to cook, you have to cook for that baby. You can't eat hot dogs and hamburgers for the rest of his life. Right. So mothers learn how to cook. So because of that, when you was a little boy and I was a little boy, your mother cooked for you. So that's the first thing that women cook. So we have a perception when we grow up that the woman in our home is going to cook. But like I said, when she said, why should women have to do it? You're the feeder. You're the original feeder. And so that's what it gets concept. Yeah, you are the original feeder. Yep, yep, yep. I, my, my brother just had a baby. Uh, his girlfriend just, or fiance had a baby in April, and I asked him uh, at two o'clock in the morning when the baby wakes up, who gets up? And he said, "Well, she does." Because I said, "Is it to change diaper?" He said, "It's rarely for that. The baby wants to eat at two in the morning, so yeah. it is, she's the mother is the source. She is the source of food. She, you know, strictly breastfeeds." the baby. So, so that's a natural progression that, well, my mother's always been food. So where's the food, mom? <laughs> yeah. And, and so that's, that's exactly. So when I counsel, just like you're saying, always try to broaden the conversation. You could always catch a woman if you broaden the conversation. If you just do narrow, they'll, they'll wiggle out of that. So not only was she the first feeder, most women in counseling can complain to you, my mother wasn't there for me. She didn't cook for us. She didn't clean for us. She didn't go to my school. See, children are more sexist than adults have because they put their mother in that role. And exactly. when they became an adult, they're like, I don't have to do that stuff. You just complain about that woman not doing that stuff. Right. And then you repeat the same behavior. Right. Justin. You're watching Justin. Eminem. Justin. The Men's Justin. Channel. Because I... Because I, because right. So, so the, the thing that men need to learn is that these feelings you're having, that's not love. Those are biochemical secretions. And it's nature. It's how intelligent nature is. Nature says, just in case men and women can't get along. <laughs> I'm going to give you these biochemical secretions that make you feel good, make you want to have sex, 
so you can perpetuate the species. That's what I'm going to give you. And, and other animals have the same secretion of oxytocin and serotonin and, and dopamine, and it makes them want to have sex. It has nothing to do with love. It doesn't make you special or anything. Yeah. So if you want to know, as a man, if you can actually enjoy those feelings, I enjoy them. I can di distinguish them between a good feeling and love. Yeah. And if you talk to her, if you pay attention to a woman, what does she do to make the relationship great? Yes, cooking and cleaning, those are nice. She's going to do that for herself anyway. Yeah. So that's not for you special. Um, but will she go to bat for you? Will she go out and introduce, will she open up her black book, her network of, uh, of people from her parents uh, and from herself that are valuable? Because most women will share her body with you before she shares her network with you. Sure, because her right network so. is valuable. If you screw up her network, you could burn bridges for her. Yeah, that's true. The, uh, like I said, when I used to counsel, I would have to tell women, they would always come be focused with a narrow focus. He wants to have sex or something. Or maybe I should just give him sex out of a fixed relationship. I said, man, there's, there's four parts of the human psyche. Sex is like the most basic one, then there's a relationship, communication, there's a raising of children, and then there's a higher association we have, whatever God we serve. So most women are, out of the four, they just get the one, just the sex. Mm -hmm. So that's why a relationship goes to crap. Right. Because sex only works when you're actually laying down. The relationship, when they're standing up, is missing. Like you said, if she won't get you any kind of uh, access to friends that she knows in the business world, can bring to your business. Exactly. You know, they're withdrawn from it like you're an ATM. And you have a lot of these guys on YouTube, they talk all the time. She thinks I'm an ATM. Yes. Yes, she does. Since she was a child, she raised a thing. Exactly. We always think that women are ass and women think that men are ATMs. Right. Well, you know, in some ways, even if you take it back to a, a hunter society, right? I, I lived in Belize with Mayan Indians, literally in the jungle, no electricity, no running water, lived in a hut, dirt floors. And I, I worked with uh, the men, this, this, the family I stayed with uh, every day by six in the morning, we're out where we are chopping down the jungle with a machete, uh, making a hole in the ground with a stick, dropping the seeds in, and the women stayed back at lunchtime. They, the women every day brought us lunch. They washed the clothes. They did all the things. They kept the house clean. They, you know, the babies taken care of. Um, but the women that listen, it was hard work for eight hours swinging a, a oh, yeah. machete. Uh, and then the, the father, he would go hunting. So if a woman's going to have a baby, it's going to be difficult for her. Even if she's good at those, you know, swinging a machete, hunting, if she gets pregnant, she's kind of vulnerable, so she's going to depend on a man. Now, that's that hunting and, and planting, that's the ATM machine because that's what's feeding you. Uh, so in a way, you can understand that, right? Yeah. Um, if for, for a woman, it's, it's a risk to get into a relationship and get pregnant because it makes you vulnerable for uh, being able to survive on your own. So you understand that. Uh, at the same time, you know, I, I, this is a this is a hard hard way for people to hear it. Children are a liability, right? There's no, they're not giving you anything in return. What is it? Uh, from birth to eighteen, you're going to spend at least a quarter of a million dollars on them, and you're getting nothing back. Understand that. So, if if you want the ideal situation where the mother stays home, and and I I had that. I had my stay at home mom, and it's great to come home from school and your mother's there instead of an empty house. Uh, that's an ideal situation if you want to secure a stable household. And that means the man is out working. And yes, there's that level of he's an ATM. He's financing the family. Uh, and I think most men don't have a problem with that, provided they have a wife that's adding value to their life. Like raising the children, that's good. She would do that as a single mom. But how does a wife, a woman interact with her man in a way that he, she is making life better for him, easier for him. Yeah, I used to, uh, I used to talk to the women because uh, I would always have to try to get them to see how the man sees 
the relationship. That it sucks, like what you're talking about. If they don't work with them, if they're working against them. Right. And so I can always use, even to this day, children, like you said, because uh, love flows downhill. Husbands love their wives, wives love their children. But uphill, the man goes. So the child's like, did you buy me something? Did you do this for me? Did you do that? And like this, you say, they're liability. So they don't bring anything back. So they can give you maximum destruction, but they still want love. The same behavior that the woman is doing. <laughs> and you, they, they mess you up all year long and say, you forgot my birthday, just like the woman would. You forgot right. Christmas. And so the woman does the exact same thing to men. So I always tell women, if you want to know how a guy feels, watch the way your children treat you. Because anybody that you are above, and if women don't think that men are above them, Right. Look at the way she acts in his presence. Because the same way a child acts in the mother's presence, knowing that the mother's above the child, and in every way women and children are the same, because even your child will say, like a woman, I'm running away. <laughs> you get to, you get to the max, you know? You get your meals prepared, you got every financial need you have. The parents are suffering, like the guy suffering for the woman, the woman suffering for the child. The woman says, my child hates me. I provide all this stuff. I work for it all day. So now you know what the guy feels. Yeah, so the child will say, I'm going to run away. Like the woman says, I'm leaving here. I'm not happy. Yeah. So anytime you want to tell them, all you do is children behave the exact same way. When you throw love downhill, children respond the same way. Mm, I don't care. I'm doing you a favor being here. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, well what, when that child runs away and gets hungry, and has no source uh, of <laughs> food. Uh, reality shocks. So one one of the things I say, if women are that unhappy and that oppressed, why don't you pack up, move to an island, build an all female civilization, and then you'll stick it to us and show us how it's going. To be done. <laughs> when you have to go out and, and drill for your own oil and and go into coal mines and iron ore mines, and you need clean water and you, you need food, you'll find out what it's like to build a bridge. In a skyscraper, uh, you'll find out. Well, this is the same way like the children. The mom can tell the children, why don't you leave and take care of yourself? Because they cannot. Right. And they tell her, I don't need you. The mother next door is better than you. My teacher. And what about this? You ever heard that saying, a woman tells a guy, you're not a real man? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Right. What about the child? You're not a real mother. Right. Same damaging words. So yeah, it flows exactly downhill. The exact same behavior women give to men. Children, because she's an authority over that child who tries to pretend, you're not in control of me. I could run myself. Right. You're pretending. So I don't even engage really in those arguments because you admit that a guy's above you when you do childlike behavior exactly. that can make you lose your entire house in one day, entire car. He gets arrested. You go to the streets. Same thing women, I mean, children... And lower class families get arrested, make their mother lose. She says, I'm trying to work with you, stay in school, that sort of thing. Same thing. Well, I, that's, I don't argue. I just say to women, well, I understand life is tough, it's horrible. Men are horrible. You should pack up and leave. I'm on your side. I'm all for equality. Women should stick it to men, pack up and leave, and go move to your own island. And that'll be the greatest reality TV show <laughs> in the world. <laughs> I, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, my mom, she studied hard to pass the civil service exam in the 70s in Washington, D.C. She wanted to get a job at Veterans Administration in D.C. She worked that job every day, but she cared more about her family and her children than she did that job. And she always came home and cooked. She never complained about it. She even got cancer and died a little bit less than 20 years ago, but she never complained. And even more than that, she started at VA in the 70s. Before she died, she was the second person in charge of VA. Oh, wow. And in the Reagan administration, President Reagan made VA a cabinet position. So if wow. that dude was absent, she could sit right there. But she never was impressed with that or that job. Her family came first. Even her mother told her, you got to take it home first. And so when I grew up, when I got married, and I've been married for 35 years, my family comes first. So guys like me or like you saying, you don't understand what I'm talking about. What do you mean? Your family's going to come first. You know? Rights. I always tell people years ago, they said the women got liberated that day in the 70s when Congress signed that. 
Right. Yeah. Well, 1201, men got liberated that same day. <laughs> they didn't have to do any of the stuff they did before. So you can't uh, free one without the other. Right. You know, th there's another thing that, um, uh, you know, I, I say, you know, we've been hoodwinked. We've been told all you need is love and all that. So something related to that is, and I, I put it in my book, which is, it has to do with feelings. Um, you could say that a lot of the emotions that we have and the good feelings, it's, it's really more learned behavior. So <clears throat> and I've had this conversation with women and it's very interested, uh, very interesting. And it's, it's a little disturbing when women have to think about it this way. <clears throat> and so what I say is I'll say to, uh, you know, one woman in a group, let's say you and I, Nancy are married. We've been, I'm not married. We've been in a relationship for two years. Everything is going well. You, you really love me. I love you. And one day I come home and I've got a dozen roses in one hand. And in the other, I open this box up and it's a two carat flawless emerald diamond ring. Wow. How are you going to feel? And they're like, is that a trick question? You know, so, <laughs> so. <laughs> You know, of course, I'm going to be happy and, you you know, things are going well, blah, blah. And then I ask, what's the difference between me going in the yard, getting a dozen dandelions and getting one of the rocks in the yard and fashioning it into a ring with some, you know, metal I have and putting that on your finger? Like, what's the difference? Why would you feel happy about the rock? Because it is a rock that they call a diamond and the roses why is that better than the dandelions? And, you know, women are like, oh, you don't understand. It's, you know, one feels better than, yes, because you've been told. You know, if I met you the day you were born and I came with the dozen roses and, and the diamond, you were a newborn infant. You don't know anything about that. It would mean nothing to you. It wouldn't make you happy. It would make you sad. So you're putting so much value on this diamond and the roses instead of me and, and the relationship. But it's all because you've been, it, it's like what we've been told about love. We've been told what to feel good about, what to feel bad about, what should make us happy. But we're really not competent. Uh, and and that's, a, that's maybe a harsh thing to say. Most people are not competent about how to make a relationship work. They're looking yeah. for the magic that they saw in, in Hollywood. So, you know, things like the diamond. Oh, you know, the bigger the rock, the bigger his love for you. Like, that has nothing to do with... No, absolutely nothing. The same women that you're talking about were once girls. Right. And they were girls. They would have took the box instead of the shiny toy in the box. They're no different than boys. Exactly. Now, they would have played in them. If you ever had a daughter, they will play in the mud outside. They'll stick their head up their nose. It's a bigger toy. You know, so, yeah, they don't care. They were trained into that. Exactly. You know? And that's what we're facing each other. Most people don't realize what you're talking about until the day day, what I call the last week in bed. And that's when you're in the hospital looking out the window and you're counting down. You're not going to make it past that week. They wish they would have lived. Nobody ever said, I wish I could have another day at the job. They wish I could have more time with their friends. And all the stuff that you're talking about, the diamond rings and stuff like that, that stuff is transient. The money in our pocket is there because people did had it the day before. You live in a house, you, what do you do? Because it was a person who used to live in before they did. Right. But that way, all recycle. So when we care about these things that's going to be here after we're gone, yeah, you're right. There is no love in that. No love. No love outside of uh, the Beers Diamonds teaching you that way. Disney. Exactly. In America. Uh, did you ever see the movie uh, Citizen Kane? Citizen Kane, yeah. Rosebud, yeah. Rosebud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got to go get it. Rosebud. You got to be always good to know that, yeah. You, you don't get it to the very end of the movie. You get the punchline <laughs> right at the end, man. Yeah. So if someone yeah. hasn't seen it, it's worth seeing Citizen Kane. It, it yeah, really I would recommend it. It's what uh, we're talking about here. And it, and don't skip the movie, but at the end, you get the punchline. Yeah, you'll understand. Yeah, yeah but that, like I said, that is an outstanding topic you talked about. Like I said, I've been counseling since the early 90s, uh, written plenty of books, but I never, if I would thought about using that that you said, that love is not a qualifier. I knew all the science. Uh, I knew all the human chemistry of the entire body. I, I know that. 
I know the accounts thing. I know that. But you're actually summing up everything in that stuff that I had to learn. Because, like I said, guys just seeing her and they say, I'm in love. Right. She sees the guy, if he doesn't have a great job with a career path and a house of his own, then I can't fall in love with him. Oh, she's looking at his shoes. What kind of shoes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does that do with anything? Right. Right. But so so sort of I guess the the punchline is men stop looking for love. Stop thinking about can I do I love this woman or if she loves me she'll do this stuff because that's not love. You know, Charles is talking about all the biochemicals that make it feel like see, love has nothing to do with feelings. So if you know how to create a great relationship it's like if you were looking for a business partner, you're not looking for someone you love. You're looking for someone who is great at what they do, someone who compliments. So if you're sales and operations and they are finance and, and high tech and they're great at what they do, you're going to have an affinity for them if they do their job well and your company grows. It's the same thing with a marriage. Uh, does she compliment you? Does she know how to create a great relationship? And as a man, you have a right to ask a woman, do you know how to create a great relationship? How would how would you create a great relationship? You can ask any question around revolving around what it takes to create a great relationship. How did she create a great relationship in her past? If she's clueless, she may be she may not be a good choice. But if she's open to learning, and a lot of women aren't, and you and I talk about this because they're taught they're smarter than men, so they may be closed-minded in thinking, well, I know more than him. I'm more mature than him anyway. So that's a bad deal for you. Which is the same as the child I told you before. I'm right. smarter than my mother. She's stupid. But I like the parallel that you made between the two uh, because you got a relationship, and you said business. The parallels are exactly the same. Exactly. You wouldn't choose a loser if you were going into a sophisticated business, if you're selling drugs on the corner, you, you still need somebody good for that. Exactly. But isn't it ironic that a marriage will fail just as fast as a business with the wrong partner? Most exactly. businesses fail, have businesses fail within maybe the first year to five years. And marriages do as well. So you pick the wrong partner, like, like Ted's saying. You, you're asking for failure. You know, you don't pick your, the guy who's going to go in business with a, with a woman because they look good. Right. Oh, it looks good. They know nothing about finance. They use this business as their personal wallet. Yeah. No. Well, and so, and we bring it back full circle. So we think that, well, I just chose her. She looks good. It didn't work out. But that affects everyone. Because if corporate America is losing $300 billion a year because of lost workplace product, workplace productivity, Everyone, you think corporate America wants to pay that? They just roll that down hill. Yeah. Right. They write it off. The taxpayer covers it. They start laying people off because you're not productive. They can't have all those people uh, working at 50% capacity or less. So they start laying you off, which those layoffs, layoffs create more stress on relationships, which now you're going to have more divorce. Um, <laughs> yeah, the... Uh like I said, when I was in the military, the enlisted soldiers, a little bit over half would get a divorce. Wow. It wouldn't last past first year for most of them. Wow. Because they choose a girl in the town based upon how she looks. But this is what's odd. The default rate in houses in America, uh, housing loans, is anywhere between maybe 2 to 8%. It depends on which year. But for government... When the government finances a loan to the soldiers that I'm talking about, over 55% default rate in those homes because she breaks up with him. Wow. They split them up. They split them up. And I, like I said, I was in a leadership position. You get these young girls all the time. They give the guy a hard way to go. He's just young. The first sergeant calls the, he said, bring your wife to the barracks. And the first thing she says, he has no control over me. I'm not in the military. He says, yes, ma'am. But the captain of this unit, that's his housing. See, so he's going to take you out of there. You can go back to your home state. We'll move this guy back into the barracks. And it happens all the time. Wow. You know, these girls are so uh, immature because they came from the house where the mother took care of them all the time. 
right. He was a cook, the clean, the worker. And so when they transferred just one across the street to the gas house, gave up their job, gave them all the load at 18, it's going to fail. It's going to fail. And as long as we keep choosing based upon from behind, like as one guy, he's religious. When you're a counselor, you've got to learn those the three faiths, right. the major three faiths. Uh, and so he said he wanted to stay with his wife because in the Bible says you can't get a divorce. I said, uh, also it says what uh, God has joined together, let no man separate. But actually, when you join her, you seen her butt from behind, and you join that together. Don't blame him for something. You chose from behind. That's not right. a new faith. Yeah, they, that's how we choose women. You know, they don't choose us that way. But yeah, yeah. that's what I say. Uh, and we're going to let you go ahead and talk about your book, uh, Ted, because it is a great book. Here's Why You Can't Find Love. Ted does it in a conversational style, and I like books in a conversational style. They're not mainly chapter-based, but it's an ongoing conversation that he had with a group of women who came on to him in a nightly function, fired up, you know, and they thought that he was going to fold, but he started releasing and telling them things, and the more he talked, the more they listened. And one thing about it, women are as educated as men. A human brain is a human brain. Women right. use the right part of the brain. Men use the left, but a brain is a brain. And so when you apply logic, when you tell women logic, they understand. You know, you got a lot of stuff out here in the street today, a lot of stuff on the news. The women suggest something silly. We should do this as a society. Very silly and destructive. And I said, really, how do you suggest that one and six are equal numbers? And then you go to college as a woman, and you know you get back on the test, one and one are equal numbers. You know, how do you do that in there to get a grade? You come out on the street and you say, this so this change to society is going to work. You know it's not going to work. Right. So, you know, when you apply common sense and reason to women, when you talk to them in a way that Ted did, right. that's going too strong. You can't say, oh, that's right, you know, women are this and women are that. No, 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 no. If you approach her on that particular level, like he did in that book, and like I said, I suggest that anybody gets that book. Because as a male, you're going to be deficient when you have those four chemicals that dominate the prefrontal cortex of your brain. When you see that girl, your defensive mechanism turned off because, one, guys are attracted to women that they see as sexual. In psychology, guys are also attracted to women that make the appearance of their mother. So in some essence, men are attracted the same as their mother. You know, that's not because they desire her sexually, but there's something comfortable in right. that woman. She can have a mother's voice. She going to take you as your mother, and so you get attracted into that. So males attracted sexually, and somebody like their mother. If a male chooses somebody who's not like his mother, it's because he does not like his mother. So either choose like her or opposite of her. But uh, like I say, I suggest you get that book. You read it from cover to cover. Don't think that you're too smart. Because smart is what's been getting us in this trouble. How many guys have had their bank accounts empty? How many guys have had their cars key and burned, their house burned down? Just like the woman in TLC. He put her in a mansion. She put the stuff in the bathtub, burned the whole mansion down. So before you get your life into a wreck and then try to extricate yourself from that and read books like Ted has or Anthony Robbins, I'm going to try to fix my life. That's backwards behavior. Ted, hold it up how they can see it. So when you go to Amazon or Barnes & Noble, and we put the link down below, don't try to extricate yourself from a problem once you're in it. This channel exists to help you in advance. Not to hate women, but to help you in advance. Well, and well, thank you always. We'd love to have you on again. Anything else you want to say in closing? Uh, I, um, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll summarize in saying... <clears throat> Men, stop looking for love. It's not love that's going to make your life happy or your relationship great. What you are calling love, it, they're just biochemical, biochemical secretions that feel good. Enjoy them. There's nothing wrong with that. Problem is when you commit to something only for that, and the, as Charles was saying, the biochemical secretions can be happening just based on looks. Find out if this woman knows how to create a great relationship. And you are also responsible for developing yourself to be able to create a great relationship as well, to be able to maintain and keep that kind of woman who can do that. Okay, I'll close by saying that when I used to counsel, I pioneered 
a method that's called delayed reflective mind. Delayed reflective mind is it warns you after you've done something wrong. So when you're a little kid, you go into your mother's purse, and you think you're slick, you steal her change, and you go to school and buy candy. Now, later on, she catches you uh, that you've done that. You feel bad. She either whoops you or punishes you, send you to your room. The same mind that told you you should steal it, she'll never catch you. While you sit in that room, says, see who you are? You're a horrible person. You're a bad son. See, you hurt her feelings. So that's a delayed reflective mind. Mm -hmm. You have the sympathetic nerve that works when you are aroused, like Ted says, with those four chemicals. The sympathetic nerve goes out to your entire body, and it says, you know, go on with this girl. She's great. She's beautiful. It'll work out. And when she messes you over and you feel the strong pain of the same biochemistry, it tells you the opposite way. Fight or flight. Run. Get out of here before she kills you. You have the parasympathetic nerve. And what it does is it drains all of those positive chemicals out of your system. That's when you finally your heart sinks and like, oh man, this girl was never with me the whole time. She was never for me. So the way reflective mind works in a relationship when a guy says, wow, I didn't see this up front. Sure. When a parasympathetic nerve drains all of that loving chemical for that one person, you're going to come to your senses. Read this book now. Make it happen. We'll see you guys again next time. Thank Thanks, you. Charles. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye. Tune in next time for Truth to Power.